here's here's how you can tell if your hen is broody. Hey guys, it's Derek from Farmside Fun. Uh, we had one of our hens go broody probably three or four days ago, and we wanted to show you how you can tell when you have a fertile egg versus a non-fertile egg. Um, we've been trying to get her to go broody all summer. Uh, it finally happened. It's at the end of July, which is fine because I'm just going to let her raise the chicks anyway. Um, so I don't, I don't really care. By the time fall comes, they'll be old enough to withstand the cold, and they'll be laying by next summer. So that'll, it'll work out good for us. Now I was in the coop earlier this morning. I didn't bother um, taking the ones that I can definitely tell were for a lot, and these were kind of iffy. So I, I brought them inside and checked them out a little bit further. So I'll show you. All right, it was a little bit too bright in the kitchen to show you this accurately. Um, so basically all I use, this is a flashlight that I carry every day, it's the Terralux 300. Um, you can get these on Amazon, they're about $30. It's a, it's a great little flashlight to have, it goes really far, it lasts a long time with two AA batteries. And it's very bright so it works very well for candling the eggs. I don't know how well this is going to show up on the camera. You can see how big and dark that dark spot is there. Sometimes you can't, the veining doesn't show up, but you can see these dark spots. And there's a, a very slight little bit of veining right here. This one shows up pretty well. You can see the dark spot down there. And I think you can see the, the veining right at the very top, right up right up here you can see some of the veining. Well, that one actually shows up really well. You can see the dark spot right in the middle of the egg and you can see the veins coming up wisping off the top up here and toward the side of the flashlight. And then here's two eggs that are not fertile, and you can see the light goes right through them. They're very light. You can see a little bit of the yolk. You can still see the air sac at the bottom, but you can see how clear everything in this egg is. That's that's just the easiest way to tell early on if uh, if an egg is fertile or not. And that dark spot is the dark spot on the egg. You can see the air sac at the bottom here. But nothing, nothing inside. The whole egg lights up really nicely. So that's that's how you can tell if your eggs are, are fertile or not pretty early on. Um, just look for dark spots. Uh, if you see any veining, usually you wait till about 10 days. Like I said, these are about four or five days old now. So they're, uh, we're going to go put these back under the hen. I'll put these two in the fridge. Okay, so here's the broody mama hen. And here's, here's how you can tell if your hen is broody. Normally they're very nice and they don't want to, <laughs> they don't bother you much and you know you can reach right under them and take their eggs. When they're broody, they, you, you can't do that. But here let me show you, we'll put an egg in front of her. And so you'll probably be able to watch her tuck it underneath herself. And she's nesting up here in the eaves of the chicken coop where they usually lay their eggs, which is fine by me that they lay their eggs up here. But um, we're she's gonna have to be moved because when the chicks hatch, they're not gonna be able to get out from here. And there's a gap underneath here, so they will fall out and they probably die when they hit the ground. So she's gonna have to be moved. We're going to move her tonight. It's the, at night is the best time to move a broody hen. Um, she's going to squawk and squeal, and that's, that's fine. No, they're going to peck at you. It doesn't hurt. But we're going to move her into, into this bin over here. I just put this in here this morning. Oh, wow, that is bright. But 
but we'll move her into this bin over here that this that I put in here this morning. Um, I'm gonna move her into a quiet spot into the shed in a, in a bigger box so she can't get out because she's gonna want to get out and get back into here with everything else with all of her eggs. So she was already sitting on eight eggs. Um, I brought out another five for her to sit on, sit on, so that's 13. She doesn't like me sitting here. She's not gonna, yeah, she's not gonna put the eggs underneath herself right now. So we're just gonna leave them here and let her do this. Anyway, she was, uh, she was sitting on eight eggs originally. There's another five in here, so that's 13 eggs. Um, they say a hen can effectively sit on eight to ten eggs uh, last year when we did this <laughs> we had um, we had I think 12 eggs uh, one of the eggs end up not hatching um, so I think they can sit on more eggs than eight they were they were all attempted to hatch one never made it out of the shell which I never help with the with the hatching I always let them work it out on their own if they don't then they don't we don't want any uh, weaker birds we want a healthy flock. We want a flock we don't have to tend too much. And we've had that so far. We've had no sick birds or anything like that. So, all right, we'll, we'll come back tonight when we move her, and we'll uh, we'll show you how that's done. Thanks for watching. All right, so it's later tonight. I know I said I was gonna move the broody hen tonight, but I just don't have anywhere to put her. Um, I've got to get the the Cornish cross chicks out of the brooder, which are now in the barn. I'll show you them in a in a couple of minutes. But uh, this is what I've been working on. This is a chicken tractor that I'm building for them. Um, I believe this will house about 30 birds. It's about 8 feet long, about 6 feet wide, uh, 2 and a half feet high, which should be plenty. I'm just making this, this whole top here. That's the top leading up there. I was just putting the wire mesh on this evening. So the wire mesh is all on the top. This is going to be the roofing. I'm probably going to put another piece on the back here and on both sides here, just on the back, so they can get out of the elements. Because uh, they really don't need too much because they're only going to be in here a little while. So that's that's what I was working on. It's kind of like the Joel Salatin's model. Not really. It's kind of my own flip on it. So I think it'll work out really nice. It's pretty lightweight. Um, I haven't decided where I'm going to put them yet. If I'm going to put them over by the house or over on the barn side of the property. But yeah, yes, yeah, so let me show you the checks. So here's the checks, they're getting big. We did lose one. So we have 11 now. We only ordered 10, they sent us 12. So now we have 11. Um, they were going through water really fast. So that little the little water I used wasn't working anymore. So I made I made this bucket. I just drilled holes in the bottom of it, four of them, for the, uh, the their nipple waters, I think they're called, for poultry. And they just screw right into the bottom. You make them as you can by hand and get little rubber grommets on them. And they have these little silver pieces on the, hang off the bottom that they peck at and the water drips out and they drink it. So I filled this about halfway full three days ago. And I'm probably going to have to fill it again in the morning because it's getting low. There's probably two inches in the bottom. So I'll fill it up for them in the morning. And they'll be all set. But you can see they're running out of room in here. And I would like to be able to possibly cut down on my feet just by moving them outside. So we're going we're gonna to get them out 
outside this weekend. That's my goal. Whether it's across the street or over here, I haven't decided yet, but we'll see. Yeah, they're getting big. Everybody's doing really well. And September 2nd is the butcher date, and we're going to we're going to video uh, as much of that as we can. There you go. I got one drink in now. I hear him pecking at the... Some people have a hard time getting them to to drink out of those nipple waters. Um, for me, it was extremely easy because they were already out of water. <laughs> So maybe that's maybe that's part of the trick. Let them run out of water for a little while. I mean, it wasn't very long. It was probably three hours at most. Because <clears throat> I check on them pretty regularly. So when I put it in here, I put it right on top of their their water already. So they, that's where they were going to get their water. As soon as I put it in, they started pecking at it and drinking. And it was a piece of cake. So... Maybe that's the trick, or maybe just put it right over top of their water. When that runs out, they'll start pecking at the other things and get water that way. So, but there's nothing out of room in here, and I need this for my broody hen and the new chicks that are going to be coming. So, these guys got to get outside. This weekend, they're going outside. All right, so thanks for watching, and when we move the broody hen, I will I will show you how we do that. It's that's pretty simple too. You just do it at night because that's when they're dormant and they uh, they tend to be, they don't lose their broodiness usually. Sometimes they do and you end up putting eggs in the incubator. So we'll see what happens. Thanks for watching.